So welcome everyone to the Streamzy community call for 7th March 2024. I hope I said it right. And uh, the first thing on the agenda are PR and issues. I added two PRs to the list. I guess the first one is this one, Tom Federico. How does it look with this one? I think there were still some open points, but it was almost gone, almost ready. Just few things to address, but he never came back. Maybe we can give him some, some more time or ping him. Okay. Can you ping him on the PR? Yeah, sure. Okay, thanks. And the second PR, which I think I edit, is this one, uh, which someone opened. I, this is something what should have a proposal. So I would suggest to close it. I already explained to the user that this needs a proposal first to clarify how it should be done and so on. I, to be honest, don't think it should be done the way it's done in the PR. Uh, but, well, that should be clarified in the proposal. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah, I also see that uh, the, the user agreed on working on a proposal. Okay, like this, does it make sense? Yeah. Okay, and now someone else edit some other PR. That was me. Um, it was more of a, just in case people hadn't seen it, um, I open this PR to change how we're handling some of the certificate pieces internally. So anyone who has an interest in this aerial, um, could I get a review? Um, and specifically as well, Paolo, because I think it changes some of the migration pieces, just some of the classes that are being passed around. But yeah, just an FYI for people in case they hadn't seen it. Yeah, I have to review that one. Uh, just one question, uh, not just for you, Kate, but for, for everyone. Uh, are we aiming to have this in 040 or it's something for zero for the next one? 041. Because there is no milestone as well. So I don't know how much this is ready or can have an impact on the next release. I don't think it needs to go in the next release. Um, I don't know, Yaka, what you think. It's potentially, it like, as I say, it changes. Um, it's mostly like internals, so I don't think it should have any ramifications, but it does tweak how we're passing certificates and things around, so it's possible I've missed an edge case when I've been doing my testing. 
I guess the standalone installations are the most likely cases where you might have missed something, but I would doubt you. I think if you missed something in the regular cluster operator code, it would probably show up in the test. Uh, but I guess it depends on the timing. I mean, it's not approved yet, so. So we need to get the reviews and approvals first, and then we can merge it. Does that answer your question, Pavi? No, yeah, yeah. It means that if we are on time, we will have this for zero forty. So, at least this is what I have got from this. Or I mean, if you want to postpone it to zero forty one, it's not like. I think this is must have for zero forty, but at least I personally don't really see much reasons here why to not merge it. Okay, yeah, it was just a question. I have so I didn't have a look yet. So uh, I, I see that it's a kind of big PR. So there are forty four files changed. So because we are approaching to the release, uh, I was wondering if it was. Uh, yeah, yeah I think that or not. I think it looks bigger than it really is. Okay. Yeah, there's quite a few of the changes are things where, for example, the um, number of variables that are being passed to test functions changes. So then there's like 20 changes in one file, but it's just removing a variable, say, or changing a variable to something different. So that's like the same change 20 times. Okay, I will have a look anyway. Thank you. Okay, anyone has any other issues or PRs they want to discuss? If not, then we have one new proposal from a contributor which is waiting for reviews. So, uh, yeah, please have a look. It has something to do about some Oh, wow. authorization. It's fairly new, so please have a look at it. Anyone wants to discuss any other proposals? If not, then I guess the issue triage is next. So, this one is left over, left over from last time. I think Tina is still off, but I'm not sure if you had time to look into it, Kate. No, I haven't looked at this yet. Okay, so we keep it for next time. I'll make sure it's higher up in my to-do list. Okay. So, Next one is from Jonathan from the Carpenter team. Uh, it's about trying to detect faster than the what is blocked by something such as missing PVC. But also like that the rolling over pod is blocked by another pod which is not in sync because it's missing a pvc and things like that i guess he has a good reason why he opened the enhancement but i don't think the implementation is completely straightforward so maybe it should have a proposal of how the roll error logic would change to reflect that if someone would want to tackle this. So do we want to mark it as needs proposal help wanted?
Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, there is also another proposal which is open for the new roller. I don't know if this is can be included there or considered in a way. Yeah, I was kind of going to say the same because uh, having this work uh, done twice, it's not that great if we are moving to a different Kafka roller. So like this, does it make sense? Yep. And we want to add the help wanted label as well. Yes. Okay. Next issue is one I opened. So it looks like in the API module for the API classes, we use currently three different approaches how to handle the two string methods. In some cases, we seem to have implemented rendering it to YAML using JSON. In some cases, we just don't care and do nothing. And in some cases, we use Lombok to generate the two string method automatically. I thought it would be good to pick one of these and make sure all of these classes use one of these. But I guess we should also, and this might be a nice good start issue, but I think it would be also nice to decide which one is the best one. I guess the two string through the Lombok annotation might be the best approach. Or... Did you notice if the Lombok is the most used one across the API? I think the most used might be nothing, but ah. but it's either either Lombok or or nothing. Yeah, by the way, yes, I agree. We can use Lombok, and uh, it's a good start issue. Tom Bentley, do you have any special opinion on this one? Uh, his mic is not working. I, he, he left a message on the chat. So. And was it about this issue or the previous one or? It was about the previous one, I guess. So what about this one? Uh, so do we want to use Lombok everywhere? Yeah, Tom seems to be okay with Lombok. Okay. And I think this would make nice, good start issue or? Yep. 
The next issue is about something what changed with how one can override this up Kubernetes IO instance label in Streams 37. I'm honestly not aware of any particular change doing this, but I guess the question is if we want to document it or not. The user didn't seem to be too eager to open a PR to actually document it. I'm not sure I see that this is something we should do. Maybe we should just close it. Sorry, we are going to close and doing nothing about documentation. This is what you mean? So leaving Our... the user uh, opening a PR on the documentation? Yeah, I I don't know. I feel like we should open a PR to add somewhere to the documentation that one particular label works somehow differently since 0.37 when we are releasing 0.40. So I'm not sure I entirely see the value of adding that to the documentation, to be honest. And this is the only label which is affected by this behavior? I don't know. Hmm. And honestly, I think our biggest mistake was ever touching these stupid Kubernetes labels because they don't have any clear meaning, just everyone imagining them to be set differently to different values. So I think at least we should keep this issue and help wanted for this issue for documentation update. But what would the document look? Yeah. So why can't we state what labels are respected? Why is that hard? I'm not understanding that. Sorry for my naivety. Yeah, why can't we state which labels will be propagated or which set of labels will be or which set won't be? So, so as far as I can see, we have different others uh, label, which are part of this app Kubernetes IU thing. Uh, I so would that be useful to at least document this set of labels? To say if you so this label automatically set by StreamZ in this way with this meaning and you cannot change them. I see that other than instance, we have version, we have name, component. All 
I think that'd be useful, Paolo. Yeah. Then tell me what should be right there. I guess. Uh, in the, yeah, here, in the issue, you mean? Um, let me see how the issue is. Uh, Well, this well for sure this is not a bug, but it's a kind of behavior that we decided to have. Maybe we can close this and then opening an, another one related to the documentation. To document these, uh, they are four or five. Okay, so like this. Yeah, that that's for sure. It, it's not a bug. <laughs> like this? Uh, you increase it too much the font, so I cannot read what softer will take care to. To what? Okay. Okay, fine with you. Yep. I will open an issue to start to track this and then I will uh, come to this later, maybe. I okay. think you should do it because nobody else does documentation issues. Okay. It's either something Paul had to do or you have to do it. Okay, so this one is opened by Federico, but I guess I told him to do it. Uh, so in his Yar, he introduced this util method for decoding base64. Actually, it's in the... Was it done only in the replication factor change, Federico? Yes, yes. So that, that's what's really useful there to avoid uh, duplicating code uh, and having this in a central place that we can test. But then we've we found that this is used everywhere, and so we should try to use this new method right. uh, everywhere, yeah. So I guess we should keep it for triage for next time, once the PR is merged, because it yes. can't be really worked on right now, as, as, as we need to first merge the method you add. Yes, I agree, thanks. And what about the second one? Do we want to wait with that as well, or do we want to? So this is different. This is something I noticed while working on, on the very same uh, replication factor change, but this is already a potential issue, right? So we are always using US ASCII instead of UDF-8, which is kind of the default uh, configuration for modern OS. Uh, so this is something someone c can work on, could work on. If we agree that this is a change that we want to make, then I can update my PR as well, because I've co-located some of the places where we're encoding and decoding from a certificate perspective. Um, so I can update the PR to change it to a UTF-8 at least so that the certificate pieces are doing it the same way. Yeah, but I guess it would make sense to change it everywhere. Yes. Yeah. So that's where maybe the separate issue makes more sense. Yeah, I'm not yeah. saying we don't have an issue. I just meant if we're 
in agreement this is something we want to do, we could start doing it already. So anyone remembers why we used ASCII and not UTF? Is anyone aware of any possible issues or anyone has any yeah. opinions? I mean, the, the issue could be if we have to process some user data, right? Because you never know what character they pass to it. Well, if we are using only for internal stuff, that's, uh, the risk is low because we are controlling what, what's go, uh, go inside that. So that's, that's, that's more a potential issue than a real issue right now, in my opinion. Well, I think you always use it to decode external data, but it's not like, I mean, the external data are always specific kind of data, such as certificates and so on, right? Mm -hmm. I know Tom's mic is working, but um, when we were discussing the certificate work, he did mention that he thought we might be able to switch from ASCII to UTFA. Okay. So to what places would it apply? Is it just to the decoding from the secrets or? Hmm. I cannot remember right now, but that's one of the most uh, used uh, places. The secrets, I mean. Tom's posted in the chat saying we just need to be careful about places where the spec mandates ASCII. For example, he doesn't know what X509 says, but whether that, but if he thinks that that predates the UTF-8 standardization. Yeah, that doesn't really help, right? No. I mean, I think it's, I, I would guess anywhere where we're interpreting data from secrets that's not certificates, I don't see why there would be an issue switching to UTF-8. And isn't ASCII a subset of UTF-8? Uh, so uh, there should be no problem. As far as I uh, remember last time I was playing with this, um, when you encode strings into ASCII, all the values beyond 127 actually turn into question marks. But you do get one to one, I mean, one character becomes one byte. But with UTF-8, you can get one character become two bytes or three bytes. And this is the big thing. So if you don't want to filter things, uh, I remember I had to resort to using Latin one. So that's what I saw sometimes. So honestly, we can also approach it differently. We actually don't have any case where this doesn't work. So we can be pragmatic and say it works as it is and let's ignore this. Because we don't seem to be really sure where do we want to do it, where we don't want to do it, what might be the consequences. And at the same time, we don't have a single case where using ASCII caused any issue.
seems like nobody disagrees with that approach. So should we close it? Sounds good. So I guess. Okay. Uh, so this one is for system tests where there seem to be some system tests using single node replica, single replica clusters with ephemeral storage. And we know that that doesn't work very well and it's flaky. I wasn't someone already working on it. I think I might have seen some PR. I think Henrik is working on it right now. Yes, some, some of them, but some of them are also managed by Lukash. Okay, there is about regarding the ephemeral ephemeral storage and just a single replica. Yeah, this this test should be uh should be fixed in out, and there is also a separate PR for removing removing the test cases when there is on on uh, there is uh, used ephemeral storage and just uh, one replication factor. But there is a separate issue for that. Okay. So uh, can I assign it to you or Lukash or both of you? You can keep it just on me. Okay. And let's remove the needs triage label. Thanks. The next one, I think, is just a user who forgot to use the annotation. So I think we can close this. Yeah, <clears throat> even if <clears throat> I can also see his point about the message to be misleading, so it's not saying exactly that you forgot maybe the craft feature gate to be enabled. So I don't know if maybe we should improve this error message. Well, can't really say that, right? Uh, it's coming from the so, validation. So first of all, I... Yeah, but how do you know that the user wants to use craft and didn't enable the feature gate? No, I'm not saying that we, we, we know for sure, but we can say, well, we can add something or you forgot the... So, you know. We can provide a hint that uh, it's not this, maybe is the other. Because, yeah, I agree. We, we don't know what user would like to do. I don't know. I think this is... I 
I'm not sure I see anything wrong with the message. I'm in agreement with you, Jakob. I think the message looks clear enough. It mentions Zookeeper. I think that's going to give people a good enough steer as to what mistake they've made. But <clears throat> I was thinking, if you have uh, the craft uh, flag enabled, can you make this mistake? Not, right? No, yes, you can make this mistake because you are deploying uh, the node pools with controller and broker, but then you set the flag stream ZIO craft disabled so the annotation and so the the message is right in this case the message is right so should we close it Carlos? yes Okay, and the last issue is from some user about some OAuth bug, but for whatever reason, the user absolutely doesn't want to provide any locks and configuration. Sorry, Jakob, before moving forward, you can come back just a second, the previous one. To which one? To the previous one? Yeah, yeah, to the previous one. I was looking at, uh, so in the Kafka custom resource provided by the user, you have uh, stream ZIO craft enabled, right? If you scroll down a little bit and go to the Kafka, yeah, you have the annotation stream ZIO craft enabled, which says this cluster for, for me is a craft cluster and I am deploying the corresponding node pool with mixed nodes controller and broker rules. But then the message says, in a Zookeeper-based Kafka cluster, but as a user, I say, wait, it's not a Zookeeper-based Kafka cluster, it's a craft-based cluster. Because I set StreamZIO craft enabled, I didn't set StreamZIO craft disabled. So the message is saying, uh, you are deploying a Zookeeper-based Kafka cluster, which is not true. It is if you don't enable the feature gate. Yes, but it's then, different. But then yeah, all but... clusters are craft clusters. And is that clearly stated in the documentation that if you don't have that feature gate enabled, the operator will uh, consider all the clusters as Zookeeper, even if you set the stream ZIO craft annotation enabled? Because otherwise it's really confusing. So I would agree with the user. Paolo, do you really want to write a complicated if capturing all the possible situations of what the user might have meant wrongly to give him the all possible error messages? No, my, 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 my solution was dumb and simpler. Just adding an or you forgot to enable the craft enable feature gate flag. Yeah, maybe you should also give the links to the documentation how to enable it, right? In the warning in the log? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think it's something that we do. And usually. to the explanation of what feature gates are? Well, I guess that starting from a warning in the log, I can investigate and say what's saying, what's the feature gate, and they are able to find the documentation <laughs> to enable. So what does it mean to enable the craft? So I'm not saying, I agree with you, which is different to cover all the possibilities, but at least saying it can be this or this, because right now- It looks like it took the user 40 minutes to investigate it. From the existing message? I think Streams is being really clear. If you want craft at the moment, you have to enable the feature gate. I think that's all over. You, know, you find that in your documentation really, really easily. 
So I wouldn't make an alteration to the message here, especially given that this will become moot in not too distant future when you know, the world becomes craft anyway. Um, I think it's good enough. Yeah, Kate, well, my, for, for my most only... users, this won't matter already in the next release because the feature gate will be enabled by default. My only thing is that uh, the message says in a Zookeeper based Kafka cluster, but your cluster, as you are describing in the Kafka custom resource, is not Zookeeper based because you have this annotation, the stream is IO craft to be enabled. Now, it is the... Zookeeper based when it's disabled. When it's disabled, everything is Zookeeper based. Yes, but it's not disabled. The, the, the annotation here is enabled. Stream is no, the feature gate is disabled. When okay, the feature gate but... is disabled, everything is Zookeeper. Okay, but it's not visible in the Kafka custom resource. So if you take a look just at the Kafka custom resource, you you say, oh, th this is a craft-based cluster. It's not a Zookeeper-based cluster, as the message is saying to me. Then there is the other problem, which is kind of hidden, where uh, you are missing the craft feature gate, uh, and so the operator is considering this a Zookeeper-based cluster, even if you are not defining it as a zookeeper based cluster this is my my point so yeah i think it it, it won't harm if we add more clear info in the error message right yeah cool if customer i mean not, not customer i mean i mean user can can be more happier if we add that then why not right Yeah, because I mean, if I we are just an or, take a look and please uh, be sure that the craft uh, feature gate is enabled. You can double check two things. The first one is, ah, okay, is this a zookeeper based cluster? And he, take a look at the craft annotation. No, it's not because I am defining this as a craft. Okay, let's take the other suggestion. Is the craft feature gate enabled? Oh no, damn, I forgot to do that. So. It's kind of helping you, right? And we lost Jakub. I think you are completely crazy if you think that we have time to work on these things. I guess that I want to, as I said, I would like just to add, I don't know, f four or five words to this message. I would say I will open a PR and... Paul, a few weeks say... ago, you insisted that you don't want to write unit tests for things which will be in the code base for a year. Now you suddenly have time to work on things like this. But isn't it just a text message change? I'm not changing the logic. I'm just adding uh, any hint to the user. I don't know how it can break our existing code. Unless there is some unit test looking for the exact message, then I have, of course, fixed the exact message. Pretty sure there is a unit test because. But anyway, we are in the community. Other people community. write unit tests for things which will last like a year in the code base. So if I'm, I'm the only one thinking that the message is not clear as it is, I'm totally fine. So it's community. Uh, it will be just refuse the PR or I will open and I will just don't waste my time. To do that, so yeah. If, uh, uh, again, I, I think if if users can be more happier if we add that, and Paro is willing to do that, why not? So.
So I think we can still close this one and Paolo, if you have time, you can open a PR and then reopen this issue, right? Is that what we reach this conclusion? Yeah, at least from my point, it will be just a five minute change on the message. So of course the PR will go through the maintainers and the other community members. If it's not approved, it will not approved. So. I also think it's a good idea to have more clarity. Uh, so it's just five minutes change. Let's move forward to the next one. We are staying too much time on this. Okay, so tell me what to do with this one. Uh, sorry, Jakub, I was drinking uh, water, uh, what you said. I'm oh, we are, we are on the other time. one. We are on the other one. <laughs> sorry again. Yeah, this issue that we have opened, I mean, that we have opened here, I took a look and it looks legit. So we want to keep it? Yeah, it looks like <clears throat> some refactoring introduced some uh, double quotes in some place where they shouldn't be. Okay. What labels do we put on it? Or is someone going to fix it? And this is regression, essentially. It's strange the tests didn't catch this. Yeah, I don't know. That's why I asked for the configuration to see how it looks like. Yeah, probably the tests actually <laughs> adapted to test now if the wrong thing is in place without actually. Yeah, but they have also the system tests testing all out. Yeah, those should have caught this. So should it be a good start or? Should it what? Should it be a good start issue or help wanted or? No, this one is tricky. There is Tom writing in the chat. Yeah, I don't know what uh, what Tom means by alias. Well, essentially, alias, alias is specified by the users in the custom resource. Yeah, it looks here that uh, what's botched is the 
configuration notation, right? So instead of double quoting the whole file path, only a segment of the full path is quoted, right? I think that's what kills it. Well, I guess you can't just add quotes like that in the middle of the path, so. All right, exactly. So it needs to be quoted, it, the whole path should be quoted. Why should it be quoted? That I don't know. Maybe there are spaces in there. Maybe there is dot dot slash in there. Do we know that Kafka can actually handle the quote? Actually, these are OAuth properties. And so in the end, they become either environment variables or JS config. Um, and that's the tricky part because it's called JS options. So they will end up in the JS configuration. Yeah. If I remember correctly, this actually becomes environment properties. No. No. No, this will become the. So it's single. So it's single environment variable that contains the whole JS config. I doubt it's a single environment variable. I think it might be a file somewhere, but I don't know for sure. It might not even be a file. It might be actually pass through the REST API to connect. Yeah, I remember that these things, uh, they have uh, some special scripts that look into some secrets and prepare the secrets and then uh, add these configurations on top of. Not for the connectors. The connectors are managed through the REST API. Okay. So do you think it should be quoted or if it's in the JAS config? I mean like the whole path? Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure it would properly work again. But then if we look at the password, the next line, this one is quoted again. But it's quoted in full. So, But it was probably changed as part of the same edit. And so if the first line doesn't work, it's also possible, at least possible, that the second line doesn't work. So I guess we need the user to provide the actual custom resource so that we can reproduce it first, probably. That would be great. To have a reproducer is always great. Okay, so let's delete this message.
So like this, does that make sense? Tom's pointing out in his chat there that there are, looks like there are security implications for what's being done in the code there with like, the potential for aliases to, um, you know, double dot slash type navigations. So you should maybe review that code with a, from a kind of security standpoint as well. Maybe there's nothing, but we should check. Well, I guess in this case, the escaping should be done uh, in a different way, uh, not by using double quotes, but some kind of function that runs on the alias beforehand. I think we need to be careful for validating that because that might break backwards compatibility as well. Kafka is adding a, a validation for that in the uh, uh, configuration providers. Uh, I not, don't think it's in 3.7, but it could be in 3.8. I'm not sure that really helps. But I guess in the first place, we don't need the user to provide a custom resource and then you can see. Does it fine with everyone? Yep. Okay, and that should be it for the triage today. And we are just running out of time. So I guess only as a last reminder, I think we have the last chance to propose a talk for the Streamsicon. Yeah, the deadline is March 10th, right? It's Sunday. And that's it. Anyone has any other business? If not, then thanks for joining and see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye. you. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Bye.